we as a review we had looked at it when two mirrors are reclined at an angle theta and so happens that we have rays that is, ref is incident on the first mirror and then reflected on the second one and then reflected if this is beta this is beta and then this is this is alpha alpha the total deviation that initially it was moving here but finally it is moving here the angle between the two lines we said that deviation is twice the angle of the inclination of the mirror and we say in such a case the mirror forms a number of multiple images and that arrangement is what we are calling a the kaleidoscope is that okay the arrangement of mirrors in such a way that it produces it multiple images is that okay good and then let's have one example here let's have one example here and that example we are going to look at here. number of images that can be formed by a mirror which is inclined at an angle of 60 degrees between each other. That how many images can be produced if we have two mirrors and we make them incline at an angle of 60 between each other? How do we deal with that? So Number of images any is given by 360 divided by the inclination minus 1. Where theta is the inclination of the mirror. Where theta is the inclination is the angle of inclination. Inclination angle of the mirror so that means that in this case using our formula number of image will be equal to just a matter of substituting in the formula 360 divide by 60 minus 1 what is 360 divide by that it is 6 okay 360 divided by 60, we get 6, and then minus 1, that will give us a number of a total of how many images? 5 images. So therefore, it is very true that if a mirror is inclined at an angle of 60 between each other, the number of images that it can form is equal to 5 images. Is that okay? So you can try a number of examples having different, different, different inclination of the mirrors, or you can look for the inclination of the mirror given the number of images. That if someone produced eight images, what was the angle of inclination of the mirror? You can try all those. So having looked at that, let's look at some other new simple concept that is deviation deviation by rotating by rotating 
the mirror, deviation by rotating the mirror. So, after looking at the deviation of two inclined mirrors at some angle, and then let's also look at still deviation. But in this deviation, we are going to look at it. We are going to look at it. If we have a constant source of light, is that on a mirror, it will be reflected. And then what happens if it has been reflected? Supposing we rotate the mirror to some angle, what will be the shift as a result? Yeah? The shift in the reflected rays as a result of rotating the mirror. Is that okay? Yeah. The shift in the reflected rays. So, we can say, consider consider a light ray incident on a mirror in position in position M1 and reflected as O R and when the mirror is rotated through angle angle theta the reflected ray shifts to O R1. And now, after that, what is the shift in the reflected ray? So, let's try representing what we have written. And consider a light ray incident on a mirror in position M1 and reflected as O R1. And when the mirror is rotated through angle theta, maybe to position, eh, you can say, to position M2. Is that okay? And then it is also reflected, the reflected ray shift to OR1. So, how do we present what we are talking about? That supposing I have this was my mirror in position M1. This is my normal. Is that okay? And then I'm having this light ray here from a constant source that is not going to change. And then it is reflected in this direction here. That if this is O, this is N, this is A. And then this is the R I'm talking about, that it is incident here and then reflected in this direction. Is that okay? Supposing this is my angle of glassing. Is that okay? And then that is position M1. If this is incident here, then refracted here. Supposing one decides to rotate this mirror, leaving this direction constant, but you're rotating the mirror. That if the mirror was this and this is the source of light coming, I tilt it, but I should not change the source of light. In other words, I'm looking at the source being in a constant position, but I'm just playing with the, the mirror by rotating it through an angle. I'm calling it theta. Now the mirror has come in this position that I call the MO2. And by the fact that I rotated the mirror, now the reflected ray will shift in this position that I'm calling R1. Is that okay? So now, the question is, what is the shift in the reflected ray that I can call now X? Is that okay? That initially when the mirror was in this position, M1, it came here and then moved in this direction. But when I maintained this and decided to tilt my mirror up through some angle theta, we realized that the ray instead now will also tilt to this other position. Now, what is the shift X? The angle between the first reflected and the second reflected rays. Let's drive that relationship for the shift in angle in terms of the rotational angle together. So, it is very true that when this light ray was in still, if I'm considering case one, 
case one. When I talk of case one, I'm meaning position when the mirror. The, I'm looking at when the mirror in the position in M1. So from what we agreed that deviation is always twice the angle of glancing. So when my mirror is somewhere here, when my mirror is there, deviation is this. This is it. deviation D1. Is that okay? And then it is also very true that when the mirror now came in this position, and then the glancing is that. So that means in case one, my deviation D1 would always be equal to twice the angle of glancing. When the mirror was here, the angle of glancing was that. So therefore, that means that I have twice G. Is that it? From what we derive that always when light rays is reflected on the surface, the angle of deviation is always twice the angle of glancing. Therefore, I'm right to say for the case one, the one is that. Now, supposing I come and then look at the case two, when I've now shifted it in this position, what is the deviation? That still, by the fact that the direction of light rays is a constant, okay, it is a constant, but the reflected has shifted, that means that my new deviation will be this. Is that okay? That it was meant to come in this direction, but it's now reflected in here. Is that okay? I can call that one D2. And now what is that D2? D2 will still be twice the angle of glancing. And where we say the angle of glancing is the angle between the incident ray and the reflecting surface. Mind you, in case two, our reflecting surface has come in position in two. Is that okay? And our angle of incidence, your angle of inc our incident ray is still up here. That means that our glancing angle is now the whole of this. Because this one has remained, but the reflecting surface has come. From the definition of angle of glancing, that is the angle between the incident ray and the reflecting surface. It means that if the incident ray is here and the reflecting surface has come here, then that angle. Yeah, is what you're calling angle of deviation, which is the same as theta plus g. Is that okay? And we say the deviation produced as a result of that d2 should be twice that angle. Therefore, it is twice theta plus g. Is that okay? And then, how do we get the expression for x? It is very true that, it is very true that we can say d2 is equal to d1 plus x. Check on the diagram. You can check on the diagram that if I'm interested in getting angle x, okay, if I'm interested in getting angle x, I will say it is this angle d1, eh? I will say now it is angle d2 minus angle d1, or I can say angle d1 plus x gives the total of angle d2. And then from there I can now say my x is d2 minus d1. That if I take the whole of this and then subtract this, I will remain with my angle x, which is the angle between the reflected rays. Therefore, I can say x is equal to d2 is twice theta, if I open the bracket, plus twice g, and then minus d1, which is also twice g, and then x is equal to twice theta. Is that okay? And then which conclusion can we draw from this one here? The conclusion we can draw is that if we have light ray from a constant source and it is incident on a reflecting surface, if it is so happens that the mirror has been rotated through some angle, from the first position, maintaining the source of light constant, the reflected ray will shift through an angle twice the angle of rotation of that mirror. I'm repeating, the conclusion we can make from here is that if we have a constant source of light incident on a mirror and it is reflected, if that mirror is rotated, through some angle, the reflected is rotated at an angle 
twice the angle of rotation. That if I have a mirror and there is a ray which is instead and then reflected, if you happen to tilt this mirror, not changing this, leave it there, you bring it here. The ray here will also come here. Initially, if it was here in the first time, eh, when the mirror was M1, and now you have decided to bring it in position M2 through angle theta, okay? The light ray, the reflected ray will come to position R2. But what is the angle in the movement as a result of moving this through theta? What is the shift in the reflected? The shift X will be twice theta. Is that okay? So that is the principle that will be helping us in the sum of two applications that we are going to look at and that is a sextant that is used in determining elevation of heavenly bodies and an optical lever that is used in measuring or detecting small current. It uses that principle that we are going to look at in our next video. Bye-bye.